Let's talk about the number one cause of hypertension. Now, hypertension is classified in two different categories. One is primary or essential hypertension, and then you have secondary hypertension, which mainly comes from a kidney disease or maybe a tumor, et cetera. But the vast majority, 95% of hypertension is called essential or primary, which basically means unknown cause. Now, that can be related to lifestyle, uh, salt, uh, smoking, alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. But if you dive into research on this, which I'm going to put some links down below, there's a lot of data that points to having too much insulin, as in hyperinsulinemia. Now, with a hyperinsulin state, too much insulin, you're always going to have insulin resistance as well. So the fact that you have insulin resistance will cause the pancreas to make more insulin, and having more insulin will then cause the receptors to downgrade and cause insulin resistance. So they both feed on each other. Now, one of the mechanisms of why high insulin will do this is that when you have high insulin, it stimulates the autonomic nervous system, primarily the sympathetic nervous system, which, which has one effect of raising the blood pressure. The other thing that high amounts of insulin will do, it'll make the arteries very, very stiff, causing hypertension. And of course, the best thing to do, which is rarely ever done, is to do a test to see if you have insulin resistance and high insulin levels while you're fasting. This is the test that should be done, HOMA IR. If you had hypertension and you did this test, chances are you would find that you do have insulin resistance and high insulin, which, by the way, is behind type 2 diabetes. It is the thing that brews in the oven for many, many years until you develop prediabetes and then actual type 2 diabetes. So this is number one. And by the way, this is also behind the metabolic syndrome uh, where you have high blood pressure, high glucose, high cholesterol, belly fat. Now, there's several other reasons why someone's blood pressure might go up as well. Low potassium. But here's the thing. If you have too much insulin and insulin resistance, you're going to end up with low potassium because, because you need normal functioning insulin to be able to absorb potassium. And the other reason why this is uh, a common cause is because we need so much of it dietarily. We need 4,700 milligrams every single day. Instead, they're really heavy on the sodium and very light on the potassium. But for a lot of people, they'll just increase their potassium level, they'll supplement it, and all of a sudden, their blood pressure comes down. So this is a really common cause too that can be aggravated by this right here. All right. Number three, low vitamin D levels. Vitamin D has a very powerful effect over blood pressure. The vast majority is vitamin D deficient, and a good percentage of them have high blood pressure. We'll show there's a correlation, but there's been a lot of studies, and I'm going to put some down below, that show that when you take vitamin D, your blood pressure comes down. And I would recommend, if you have hypertension, to take at least 20,000 IUs maybe even more, to help you with your blood pressure. And sometimes it takes a couple days before you see the results, but you can test yourself before and after. Number four, low magnesium. Magnesium is an electrolyte. It works with potassium. You also need vitamin D to help you absorb magnesium. And also magnesium helps you absorb vitamin D. And it just so happens that magnesium is in the same foods that you would eat with potassium. But magnesium is a relaxer of your blood vessels. And if you don't have enough magnesium, things tend to stay stiff and your pressure will go up. Number five, low vitamin K2, which you need with vitamin D3. They work together. Vitamin K2 helps to keep the calcium out of the arteries where it should not be. And so if you are deficient in vitamin K2, you could potentially build up more calcium in the arteries and that can make things very, very stiff. And this comes from fatty foods. So if you're on a low-fat diet, you're going to be deficient in vitamin K2. Also, if you're on a statin drug, which blocks cholesterol, that can inhibit this as well, as well as this right here. And also, statin drugs increase your risk of getting this right here. So if you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with healthy keto and intermittent fasting, 
Uh, I put a link down below for more information to help you with this right here. But what it can do is help you support a healthy lifestyle as well as to help you support healthy insulin levels because you're reducing carbohydrates. And if I were to look at the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting on what would be a greater impact on helping you lower insulin, I would go with intermittent fasting. But the combination works even better. And one last point, this information is not meant to replace your medical care. Don't stop taking medication unless you check with your doctor first. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.